Now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to the Q&A. Also, we're going to do an, an El Paso meetup before we take off to uh, Puerto Rico, which we should be there, uh, I think, uh, a couple weeks or so. So El Paso meetup will be tomorrow. I'll give you the details tomorrow when we get to that. But that's it. If you got to take off, take off. Now let's go into the q and I'll answer all your burning questions to the best of my abilities as we go from here. And let's see. So crypto golfer. Yeah, unappropriate content. Yeah, I don't, uh, you know, they're always adding some things to, to tweak stuff. So what are you going to do? Seascape vids. Had a good point. This is what, what I took it from. The constant negativity on this channel is draining. Used to be a good channel, but Dave is just off. Rob, whatever. And instead of instilling hope and helpfulness, it's constant pessimism, negativity, getting old. You can look at it either way. I just try to be the reality as best I can because I think uh, there's plenty of channels that'll give you that, you know, but uh, I just see a lot of a lot of problems in the near term. Now, long term, like we just laid out, I think places like NYDIG and Mass Mutual and BlackRock and the big institutions are laying that foundation to really uh, take out the stratosphere, stratosphere in years to come. I just don't think it's going to be anytime soon. Uh, like I said, a lot of macro play has to be. That's it. But I understand it does suck to get constant negativity, but I try to balance it out. And then Toby says reality is better than hype. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that's the truth. But uh, sometimes, you know, I got to tell you, I know some people don't like, like some people love BitBoy and some people hate BitBoy. But BitBoy had a good comment on, on uh, Twitter not too long ago. And he said, for everybody who's bashing me, uh, talking about hopium, he goes, hopium is what kept you here from 2018 to 2019. Now, not everybody, I get that. But uh, hopium and hope is what can bring you into the next bull run as we're going through this junk bear market for quite some time. And I was like, you know, it uh, does have a point about there. So let me just think about that <laughs> in the comments and we'll go from there. Let me just see something real quick. Um, da, 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 da. There. Let me change that. Okay. Comments. Well, thank you. Sometimes it does get a little bit hectic, you know. Yeah, but sometimes like Hector says, reality is hard. You need to be realistic. Not to take. You know what it's like? It's like losing weight. It's like if I, if I was a trainer and I constantly told you, you know, it's really hard to lose weight. It's really super hard. I mean, you get in shape. I mean, look at you. It's just your fats and just dripping with, uh, with, uh, with bacon grease and you're never going to make it. And, and uh, I mean, you could make it in five years or so, but it's going to be really super hard. Maybe that wouldn't be the best approach as a trainer. Maybe a little bit of hopium goes a long way. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah. Sai says, I had a weird disclaimer before I started watching. Claim this content might be inappropriate. <laughs> Again, I will never hit that button where it says, you know, make sure it's over 18 and over. Ah. <laughs> Crypto gold. That'd be the best trainer ever. For some... Nauseous, are you subscribed to BitBoy? I don't, I have a thousand subscribes, subscriptions. He comes up in my feed every so often, but I just assume because uh, we're all in the YouTube uh, game as far as crypto. I know I see his tweets. Some are pretty interesting. You know, everybody's just doing the best they, they can, you know. They're trying to get to this, this market and that's just how it is. Yeah, Marty says that Hosky vid, he's talking about Charles Hoskin, made up about Bitcoin. is very interesting about how he thinks in the future most Bitcoin will be wrapped and not even on the Bitcoin network. This was Charles Hoskinson coming out and saying, you know, what could happen is that, and he talked about gold versus gold mines. He said, do we really need the gold mines uh, after the gold is, is mined? No, we just take the gold and then run with it. And he said, we don't really need Bitcoin miners. He may be right, but uh, I look at it like this. And of course, if you want to secure the network, you have to wrap it and do other things and, and other uh, projects. But in all honesty, there's so much money wrapped up in Bitcoin mining right now. I don't see how that could even remotely happen. And uh, even like 
the senator here, Ted Cruz, he's like big on Bitcoin mining because it's a uh, job creation and uh, also in innovation and it's a revenue generator. So in that regard, I don't see Bitcoin mining going away too much because just follow the money. That's how it goes. Speaking of Charles, one interview, I don't know he keeps ditching me. I mean, he says he's busy, but I see those live streams. I'm like, I don't know how busy you are, Charles, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Yeah, but maybe I should lighten up sometimes. <laughs> I'm just going to go swimming in the green screen. The only time I'm going to go in that pool is when we hit 100K for Bitcoin. Jada Jabba says, hey, Rod, do we need to be worried about Nexo? Yes. You need to be worried about everything. And if you don't feel, if you have vibes, sometimes your gut will tell you what to do a little bit more than the CEO coming out saying, we're totally solvent. And that's why there's this rule. And this rule underneath there, it says there's five, there's five things. Don't invest more than you can afford to lose. Uh, treat everything as a scam and tell people otherwise. Don't leave anything on exchanges. Uh, don't use leverage and take profits along the way because nobody ever went broke taking profits. So leaving nothing on exchanges, Nexo is an exchange. So maybe you might want to think about taking it off. I'm not telling you what to do. That's not financial advice. However, if you feel like there's something fishy, then get it off of there. Same thing happened with me and Celsius. Uh, June 9th, when I went to Consensus in Austin, people were telling me there's something up with, sense, up, something up with Celsius, something up with Celsius. And uh, when I got back on the 12th, I made a video. I said, hey, if you don't feel comfortable, uh, take it all off. I took my crypto off, some of it. Unfortunately, most was stuck in, uh, what was it? Custody. So I probably want to, I'll probably see that again at some point. Who knows? But that's what it is. I, I will say this though. This is going to be super unpopular. Sorry, but it's the truth. I remember when Mashinsky I think we all start as the hero. What is that, that phrase in Batman? We, we live, we're long enough to be the hero and then or, or we die the villain or something like that. Mashinsky, I remember in 2000, March 2020, excuse me, when we had this thing called the coronavirus. I don't know if you remember that. It was a big, big virus that went around. And there was a huge amount of liquidations. There was a huge drop. And there was a huge amount of turmoil in crypto and traditional finance. And Celsius was able to only liquidate, I think they said three people out of that. Who knows how true that was, but they got through it. And it was one of those things where I was like, that is a, a testament to what Celsius was able to do. And they were able to hang on. They were able to get through a black swan event. Then... They just made some bad decisions along the way, obviously, because they became yeah, insolvent. Voyager did the same thing. They were, they were a great company. I love their app. I love the people. I like the people. And then they got into Three Arrows Capital and made one uncollateralized loan for $640 million and screwed up everything. There may be other things along there. I'm not for sure. But it just it goes to show you, though, that uh, you, you, you start off good along the way, and then for some reason, just you make mistakes and then they're hard to recover from. And hopefully that's why I did these rules to protect me and you. Uh, and you can use these rules or you can add or delete or whatever you want to do. But this has served me pretty well so far. And that's it. So. Uh. <laughs> I watch you, James, and Ben every day. Personally, like each one of your views. You being bearish, James being the Super Bowl, and Ben being somewhere in the middle. You're just, I always thought I was in the middle. But uh, yeah, I guess maybe Ben's a little bit more in the middle than me some days. We'll see. Uh, Hosky vid. Maybe Jason, I don't know who that is. Coinbase news. The Coinbase news is that there was a, a documentary that they did over three or two or three years. And I think it's going to be listed on, um, on Amazon Prime. 
And I think it's coming out, I want to say in the next seven days or so, might be already, be, might, might already be out. Probably give us a, a good insight into how Brian Armstrong did things. I'd love to watch that. <laughs> David, I love losing money. That's why I love crypto so much. It wasn't always that way. Remember folks, not too long ago in November, 2021. Remember those days? Oh, almost a year ago. Good times. You know, we're much closer to a uh, Bitcoin halving event than not. Just saying. Xdar says, I don't trust myself not to lose my keys, but I have my crypto on three different exchanges. Do what I do. Just have a couple of different um, stone books and put your mnemonic phrases in uh, each one and separate them wherever you want to put it. And uh, then you'll always have a backup. Yeah, right. JH says, uh, hit the browser update. I know I should do that. Yeah, that's it. Fantasy. Either die a hero or live long enough to become the villain. That's why the next bull run, I should just stop this. I'll probably just stop this, this YouTube channel. Just next bull run. You know, and we, and we did a, a, a pretty comprehensive video about what I'm talking about selling crypto as Bitcoin pops off first, then altcoins, and we take a look at... Uh, Pi cycle tops, MVRV, Z scores, uh, well, multiple, and time and risk bands. And we kind of just mesh them all together to see what, what's a good time. Maybe at that point, I just go, you know what? It's been a great run, everybody. I've been doing this since 2019. So maybe in 2025 or 26, whenever it is, I just say, great. And uh, off in the sunset, I go, that might be a good idea. Not me. Can't believe Matic passed DOT and market cap. Polkadot's a, you know, it's a great project. Dr. Gavin Wood, part of that Ethereum mafia, co-founder. But you got to understand Polygon and Matic, they've got a lot of partnerships. Remember, they were one of six to be involved in that Disney uh, incubator program. Uh, they've been involved with um, Starbucks and their, and their new rewards program. And uh, they're also a part of um, Polygon Studios where they take uh, games and s different projects that are on Web 2 and move them over to Web 3 and Metaverse. That's a huge project. I think it's going to do really well. Uh, yeah, me too, but I'm pretty old. Yes, this is very true. That could be true. I don't know. There's no, there's no thanks tab on my YouTube. I don't know how that works. Hmm. Rob, have you heard that US residents will never be able to get sweat coins since they already had TG? Uh, if that's something new that came out, I'm not aware of it. As I understand it, uh, at some point they will, but uh, maybe I missed something. We'll find out. What? Ben was bullish the other day when we only had a small account. Ben was bullish? Uh. <laughs> can, can Coin Ledger still pull tax info from Celsius? Should we mark the Celsius as zero for a cap loss? It's a great question. And um, if you follow, I did this yesterday. Let me see if I can find it. Hold on, everybody. There's going to be, for everybody who's uncertain about taxes, because we, we had a tax extension here in America to October 17th. And there it is. There is going to be... this up oh let me show you my screen so you can see what the heck i'm doing there's going to be an ama with tax experts from coin ledger coin ledger again linked in the description uh it works great and uh, you just you put all your data uh integrative into uh for all the exchanges or even your metamask wallet and everything else so you can pull that data in and you can pay the taxes if you don't want to pay the taxes i would not recommend that but that's up to you because i'm not your dad but 
I would just say this, it might behoove you to actually pay your taxes. And in that regard, there's going to be an AMA with CPAs, uh, especially versed in uh, crypto and digital assets that you can find out in on October 11th. So what I will do for you, first of all, just search for Coin Ledger uh, in YouTube and it'll come up. Also, let me put that in today's video and we'll go from there. Deal? Deal. Let me do this right now. Uh, this one. Let's see. Coin. Drama. I know for some of you, like, we don't care because we're not in the States. Or I'm not paying taxes. I already pay my taxes. But for some of you, I know this gives you a lot of anxiety because it gives me anxiety. I invested too early and left it on Voyager. So did I. See if we get it back. <laughs> Ben, ben will be very salty. Bitcoin does not go low. Look, I would be salty too. I still think it can go lower. I think Ben will be more salty if uh, Bitcoin dominance doesn't go up. Oh, Jeff, congratulations. Sunny Brandon's in Florida, an hour north of Fort Myers. Very fortunate after missing Hurricane Ian. Marty says, you know damn well, next born, you'll be telling us to take profits every week. Oh yeah, you better believe it. And it'll be annoying. But if I don't say it enough times, they won't get it. And of course, what's going to be great about the next bull run is you being here right now, you get it. You understand what's happening. But guess what? There's going to be a bunch of tourists in 2025 or 2026, whenever it is. I don't know when it is. Or maybe even 2024. And they're going to be just getting in. And they'll be like, why would I sell? That's dumb. Everybody tells me to diamond hands. And uh, it's going to keep going up. So you suckers who are, they're going to say what they said to me in 2021. You've got PTSD. Uh, you're too old and don't understand what's going on. And you don't understand innovation. And we're just going to keep writing it up. <laughs> and we're going to sit here and go, sure, kid, whatever you want to do. And that's it. We can't tell them what to do. You can lead a horse to water, right? Uh <laughs> Michael said I was going to be like Uncle Scrooge's Bitcoin bull. Yeah, he's snapping up uh, Bitcoin. I mean, how far away is he from having 1% of the total circulating supply? I don't know. Oh, time. Great. Tough to catch you live from the construction site, but not impossible. Jeff, sounds good, man. You got to take a break, right? Travel and vignette. Rob, is your beard getting greater? Probably. Not even grayer, just whiter. Pretty soon I'll look like Santa Claus. But an in-shape Santa Claus, so I'll be okay. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, but a quick thumbs up. Jupiter's got a great question. Dynamic DCA on the way, to, on the way out too. Yeah. So I'm not an all-in kind of guy. I don't, uh, like Diddy, Diddy from the Bitcoin family. I've had him on a couple of times. Great guy, real fun. And uh, he went in heavy when Bitcoin was $1,000, which was, looking back, pretty smart. But, you know, if you would have done that, if you would have gone all in in 2017 at 20,000, you'd be right where you're at right now. You actually wouldn't have lost anything. But imagine 2017, 18, 19, 20. Imagine it's five years just sitting on it and gaining nothing because you would, didn't sell or everything else. So what I like to do is I like to dollar cost average in and then dollar cost average out and be as safe as I possibly can because it's not how much you make, it's how much you keep. And sometimes it's really about risk, sharp ratios, those type of things. Just to be a little more careful, that's all. Too much coin in the pool. Perhaps so. Uh, Norman says, what's dynamic DCA? So dynamic DCA is pretty interesting. And we've talked about this. You know what the, I should probably do a video on that, but the best place to understand that there's this website. It's called danpagescrypto.com and it's hundred percent free. I don't know if you knew that but now you do. And if you go there and you sign up and yeah, don't steal my password, one, two, three, four, five. And you go there to investing, 
module three. And you scroll down to this one, why dollar cost average, it talks about that. But more importantly, this one here, when and why I'm selling 80%. I talk about dynamic DCAing, which is you take a look at different factors. And the ones I like to use are Pi Cycle Top and UPL, and those are 100% free from looking at Bitcoin. MVRVZ score, two year moving average, plot multiple, reserve risk, and uh, time and risk. I use Ben's website. And as we start to go down, let me just pull it up. Let's just look at the MVRVC score. Look in the Bitcoin. Also, links in the description for this one. Look in the Bitcoin. Charts. God dang it. MVRVZ. So <clears throat> you can see here, it's, it makes it very simple. Colors, right? I'm not that smart. I like colors and pictures. But anyhow, so the MVRVZ score, you got your market value and realized value. And the market value is the price of Bitcoin by the number of coins circulation, obviously, right? Realized value, rather than take the current price of Bitcoin, realized value takes the price of each Bitcoin when it was last moved, which could be quite some time. So what it looks at is then is when we start to get into this, this green band area, this is a prime time to potentially start to accumulate. Once it gets up here in the red area, potentially a time to start selling <laughs> or dollar cost average out. So what I'm doing is like this. Let me just blow this up. So I think there's a, more of a downside, right? So when it hits around here, I, so like, let's say I usually put in a hundred dollars for, for Bitcoin. Right. And actually I started to write, let's say a hundred dollars of Bitcoin per week, which is very simple. Right. So what I see here is like the levels, let me see here is 0.4 as it starts to move down. I go, okay, the, there's a, there's a decrease in risk, especially in this area. So instead of putting a hundred dollars, Per week, maybe I do 125 right around here. And then when it gets down here, maybe 150. And then when it goes down here, maybe 200. And then when it goes down here, which is like Armageddon, oh, I hate when it does this, maybe I do 300. So that's called dynamic DCAing. And you can see, and we talked about this before. In 2012, it went way below. So people are like, that'll never happen. It's happened. On top of that, it happened again in 2015, negative 0 0.49. And on top of that, it happened again when the absolute bottom, December 15, 2018, negative 0.47. So at this point, these are, this is an investment advice. These are prime opportunities. And I will make mention of this. It hasn't done that yet. <laughs> Excuse me. Dang it. <clears throat> and also, <clears throat> oof, let me get some water. Sorry. Not very professional. <clears throat> uh, there's this other one I always like to talk about. And not that this is going to happen, but could happen. Everything could. And another thing is this, don't get stuck in like four-year cycles and it has to happen at this point or we have to hit this certain number. Just go with the data and that's it. But I'm just worried because if we go from the top of the last cycle to the bottom, that's an 85% reduction. That was in 2013, excuse me. In the last cycle, well, two cycles ago, 2017 to 2018, it was an 84% reduction. And so far, we've only been down about 71 to 74%. So these are the things that concern me. And not that they have to always be the same thing. It just is one of those things that it's stuck in my head. But we talked a lot about where there's an upside in today's stories. So I wasn't too negative, I don't think. Yeah, and the forest says it hasn't touched this years yet. Well, we'll see. What makes you think I'm watching this? I'm not watching this at work. Everybody's working. I want to go. I'm not a big golfer. You can, when mullet will tell you. We went golfing one time. It was awful. I'm a better caddy. So Norman says, and how do I know that when it gets under the impossible zone, it's not going to zero? That's just it. Could go to zero. 
Here's my question to everybody. If Bitcoin went below a dollar, would you buy it? And it sounds kind of ridiculous, but you have to understand <clears throat> the mental aspect of that is when you see Bitcoin go from 20,000 to 10,000, you're like, oh, it's a good idea. I should probably buy some. Then what if it goes to 5,000? Hmm, I'll still buy some, maybe 1,000. I'm definitely going to buy some. As things start to go down, it's amazing how the mentality starts to change. And you start to hear the stories around that it's going to go to zero and it's never going to recover. And this was a Ponzi scheme and everything else. And uh, I always remind you of this. There's a great website. It's called... <clears throat> Let me put this up, 99 Bitcoins. What's great about this site, let me show you, it shows you all the times that Bitcoin has died. And well, this isn't fun. How does this go all? There we go. This is all the times, let me just do it for a year, just a year. Bitcoin died from Bloom, Bloomberg state status. Uh, I don't know what that is. The Guardian, it's all going to, it's always, it always dies. If we go back here, every single month, it seems like it dies. All the way back to 2008. Why Bitcoin will fail. Forbes, this is a Ponzi. Da, da, da. And then it goes up here. And what's more funny is that I find it odd is that as it starts to peak, then you see more of the, the Swedish co-founder of Bitcoin account with some of those Bitcoins. Interesting. Yeah, and there it is. So it'll always be dead. And there'll always be people that say it, but will it actually happen? Not sure. That's it. I got, yeah, me too, David. I got 10 bucks. I can, I can buy 10 Bitcoin for a dollar. I think I'll be okay. Shannon says I'd buy it all. And Jupiter's got a good point. That approach didn't work so well with Luna. Yeah, that's the truth. I'm buying hell of Bitcoin. Yeah. Context will matter if it went below a dollar. I think if it was below a dollar, maybe like something happens like a double spend happens. There's a problem in the code that no one figured out and someone figured out and then off it is. Or maybe, I don't know, Craig Wright comes out and says, hey, I really am Satoshi Nakamoto and here's how I prove it. And uh, there's this, I remember him a couple years ago said there's some kind of bomb that he put into it that would uh, expire at 2021. Sure. And that's it. All right, everybody. So 42 minutes is pretty good time. I got to get out of here. Got to do some other things, but that's it for today. So what did we learn today? First of all, never click on that button that says uh, over 18 only, because then people think that's going to be me doing something crazy. That's a YouTube on me. And second of all, we know that not everything's bad and awful. I think there's a lot of positivity in the horizon. Just uh, right now, we got to go through some trouble spots. But I've always said it before. I'll say it again. This is the time uh, when uh, millionaires are made and when people uh, just have to be boring and just keep investing and, and time goes on. That's not financial advice. It's what I'm doing. But that's it for today. So like today's video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff. And that is it for today. So thanks so much for stopping by. I do appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one. Adios. Whew.